Helmand province in southern Afghanistan, focal point of heavy fighting by British and American forces against insurgents. The region is a stronghold of the Taliban, and it's where more than half of the country's opium crop is grown. Afghanistan produces over 90% of the world's opium, which is then smuggled across the border and ultimately sold as heroin. So far, counter-narcotics efforts have focused on eradicating poppy fields. But Paul Burton, policy director at ICOS, the International Council for Security and Development, says it only robs farmers of their livelihoods and forces them to join the insurgency to support their families. You get rid of some 10 hectares of, of, of poppy, another 10 hectares will, will soon spring up elsewhere. And it, by the way, in the interim, we've created another 50 to 100 ready recruits for the insurgency. The United Nations estimates insurgents earn up to $400 million a year from opium, which funds their ability to fight. Christopher Langton served in the British Army for 32 years. He's now an analyst with the International Institute of Strategic Studies and says opium is complicating Britain's mission in Afghanistan. Poppy produces finance for the insurgency as well as for corrupt government officials, of course, uh, and others in Afghanistan. Um, and ultimately produces heroin on the streets of Britain. Um, so it's always in people's minds. The question is, what do you do about it? Opium can easily be trafficked across Afghanistan's porous border. This truck has just entered Iran. The US and its allies have been encouraging Afghan farmers to grow alternative crops, such as wheat, pomegranates or nuts. But it's failed to stop the widespread cultivation of poppy. America's new policy will focus on stopping the opium from leaving Afghanistan, aiming to not punish the average farmer, but rather to cut off the supply routes and hopefully, ultimately, make the opium worthless. But Paul Burton wants America and Britain to support his group's Poppy for Medicine campaign. It would convert a portion of Afghanistan's opium into morphine for medicinal use around the world. We have a vast abundance of this crop in Afghanistan, let's try and start to use that for the benefit of, of cancer sufferers around the world. The Poppy for Medicine campaign would ensure that farmers who grow poppy crops can still support their families. Christopher Langton says while the theory is good, the timing is wrong to set up a morphine production plant in Afghanistan. I think in the future, when there is stability, uh, and governance has grown up, then perhaps there is going to be a much greater opportunity for this. Uh, as I say, it's a very worthy idea and it shouldn't be discounted. As the fighting ratchets up ahead of next month's elections in Afghanistan, the war and rising casualty figures have sparked debate in London. And as for the war against opium, opposition lawmaker Adam Holloway of the Conservative Party says it's part of the larger fight for the hearts and minds of local Afghans. If we're going to win over the people, we have to give them some sort of alternative. Just crazy to think, you know, grow poppy will destroy your field. I mean, that's just mad. That's really not a way to win hearts and minds. Holloway thinks the strategy in Afghanistan needs to shift from the battlefield to helping average Afghans. He thinks that will go a long way to beat back the insurgency and cut down the production of opium. Rachel Smalley, VOA News, London.